Thank you, Abby. Amen. Welcome. Good to see you this morning. Hey, I hope you've had a great week. It seems like summertime has come upon us. And it is good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we come together to worship and to give praise to our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We especially want to welcome those who are joining us online through our live stream, and we want to let you know we're so glad to have you uh, a part of this worship service. And we certainly hope the service this morning will be a blessing to you at home as well. We have just a few announcements I want to draw your attention to. I can tell things are getting a little more back to normal as uh, we're starting to get a few more announcements on Sunday and a lot more activities going on, uh, both here at the church and, uh, you know, within the community. Uh, this past uh, Saturday, they had a yard sale here at the church, and Pastor Kevin will be giving some details uh, regarding the uh, outcome of that, but I understand they had a, a great turnout. I know uh, Joy and I, we had a company. My daughter was down this weekend, and my son Timothy had uh, completed and graduated from the Fire Academy in Arlington, so we were up in the D.C. area most of the weekend, but it's great to see people getting out and getting back to normal each and every day. Well, in the week ahead, we want to remind those who were part of our, our women's mission group that the uh, Women on Mission will be meeting this Monday at 10 o'clock, uh, and then following their meeting at 11 o'clock, they will be doing a, a prayer walk. And understand if there is rain, there's a chance of rain, which we could use some rain, uh, they'll be doing the prayer walk inside. So ladies, uh, please make note of that. Be here at 10 for the study. And then at 11 for the prayer walk. Also, uh, I have an announcement concerning our children's ministry. We are in need of workers for both the nursery and children's church. And if you have any questions regarding that, you can see Lisa DeMarco. But if you'd be willing to uh, help us out uh, with this need, you can sign up at the Connection Center, the Welcome Center in the foyer. Uh, it's always a blessing when we have our children come in and participate in our worship service. And uh, I know it'll be a blessing for those that are involved in that particular ministry as well. So please make note of that. Also, Sunday school workers. We're going to be needing Sunday school workers here soon. And Pastor Kevin is working already, getting together some of our workers for Sunday school and communicating with them. And so if you would be willing to work with our children during the Sunday school hour, especially when we get our Sunday school started back up in September, if you would please let Pastor Kevin or myself know. Uh, we certainly hope that by that time we'll have all the positions filled and we'll be ready to start off Sunday school fresh and anew uh, with the upcoming church year. Uh, we want to let everybody know that Debbie, our church administrator, will be out of the office this week. Uh, we have different folks that will be filling in uh, her, her position, uh, basically answering the phones and, and doing some of the office work for us. But please make note of that. Debbie's away on a much-needed and deserved vacation this week. And then she'll be getting back here after Memorial Day. Uh, but if you have something that you need to talk to her about, please hold off for the next week. And uh, she'll be back in beginning the 1st of June. So make note of that, please. Also, you'll notice today we are going to have the Lord's Supper as you were coming in this morning. Uh, hopefully you picked up one of the little cups that are available on the table in the foyer. Uh, now, if you didn't get one, don't worry. Our ushers will uh, give you the opportunity to raise your hand when we get to the end of the service uh, to have the Lord's Supper. But we want to invite uh, all baptized believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to participate with us in this special time of worship at the conclusion of our service when we will be having the Lord's Supper together. Also, Tuesday, the Women's Bible Study will be meeting here at the church at 10 a.m. Wednesday, we'll be having our Wednesday evening Bible study, and the choir will be having their rehearsal as well. And so please, if you would, make special note of that. Like I said, a lot of things going on uh, this particular week and in the weeks ahead as we get into the summer months. So it's a, it's a wonderful blessing as we see our state and our nation beginning to open up. And it's an even greater blessing on Sunday as we see new faces and some old faces we haven't seen in a while as we come together to worship. So let's go ahead at this time and begin our time of worship together as Kevin will come and lead us during our opening hymn. Kevin. 
Good to be back with you this morning. I want to ask that you join me in song as we open our worship, our hymn. It's number 403 in your hymnal, Christ is made the sure foundation. Let's stand together as we open our worship. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head, the cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever and her confidence alone. Yesterday, our nitwits were just blessed with a beautiful day outside, and they were able to uh, conduct this uh, annual yard sale that we've been doing the last few years. And uh, through the efforts of collecting items, uh, help with the, from the deacon body, help from trustees and other church members, we had a very successful yard sale yesterday and raised $2,275 for the church to help with expenses here. And Ms. Naira said there's still more to come, so apparently there's some people who still uh, need to uh, pay up for what they uh, purchased here yesterday. But just so many thanks to our nitwits and, and to so many others who helped, and, and especially to our church members who provided the items, who donated these to be sold. So thank you so much for all of that, and we know that that money will be put to good use. Um, a couple other notes to give you before we go to prayer. We got a call this morning from Sandy Baden. Uh, Buddy and, and Sandy's son, Robbie, passed away yesterday afternoon, and uh, so they called to let us know that. We will be providing more information on funeral service, but we certainly want to keep the Baden family in our prayers at this time. And then also this Wednesday, Miss Kitty Dawson will be going in for back surgery over at Inova Hospital in Alexandria, and uh, following the surgery, then she will be going to uh, rehab, a rehab facility for uh, for uh, the work afterwards. So we want to keep Miss Kitty in our prayers as well. So please join me in a time of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. We just thank you for the sunshine, for the warm weather. And Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to get out and, and do more activities, to have more time of fellowship, and uh, just to be doing your work out, out in the, our community. And, th and thank you for all of that. And I do thank you for the successful yard sale yesterday for the money that was raised that we will put to use here at the church. And uh, Father, we just thank you that you give us this opportunity to be good stewards of what you have given us, Lord. And again, thank you to all who participated, to all who donated the items, Lord, to be sold. And, uh, and Lord, we just thank you for a church that's committed to your work. And uh, Father, we do lift up Buddy and Sandy and just ask that you be with them and their loss. And uh, 
Father, just give them peace and comfort this time, Lord, for the upcoming decisions that need to be made, that you just give them clear thought in that, that uh, this church will rally around them, Lord, to be there for them and to help them. And uh, also we pray for Miss Kitty and her upcoming surgery, that uh, you be with the doctors, Lord, that uh, they will get in to be able to perform the necessary surgery to, to help heal her, to get her back uh, uh, to normal, and Lord, that the rehab that she goes through, Lord, will uh, fix all the problems that she's had, Lord. And uh, Father, we know that you are the great physician, that you will help us in these times. And Father, we know there's other church members who are hurting, other church members, Lord, who are going through issues. And we ask, ask Lord, that you be with them and help them through these times. And uh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet together here this morning. We thank you, Lord, uh, as we say each week, Lord, as, uh, as the restrictions are being lifted, Lord, that more people are coming in, that, that we are indeed seeing some new faces, Lord, some fresh faces, but also seeing some older faces of those in our membership, Lord, who are coming back and worshiping with us uh, in person. And, and I do thank you for those who are still watching online, Lord, who are with us in that way. Father, we commit this service to you that everything that we do here, Lord, will just be a blessing to you, that we will honor and praise you. And we do thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. time for our children's story. So we're going to ask all our children to come in at this time as we have our Bible story this morning. Come on. Did you hurt your foot? Huh? Did you hurt your foot? Are you just being silly? Hey, Luke, good morning. Come on in, boys and girls. Come on, gather around. Everybody sit around. Good morning. Can you say good morning? Good morning. good morning. Hey, look what I brought with me this morning. Who can tell me what that is? It's what? That's right, sheep. It's a little lamb. Remember last week? What did I bring last week? Remember I had an elephant, and I told you how I got the elephant from a missionary in Thailand? Well, I got this from Hobby Lobby. It didn't come from Thailand, okay? But, <laughs> but you know, when we look in the Bible, the Bible often tells us a lot about sheep. For example, in the Psalm 23, we're told that the Lord is our shepherd and that he will take care of us and watch over us and protect us. And in Isaiah 53, we, we are told that all we like sheep have gone astray. It talks about how sheep sometimes have a tendency to stray away from the shepherd. But you know, also in the New Testament, Jesus referred to his followers as sheep. And he said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Where do we hear the Word of God? Where does God, how does God speak to us today? Do you know? Do you know? All right. Out of, out of the Bible. That's right. This is where we find God's truth. You know, something else Jesus told us about sheep. He said sometimes we need to be careful about wolves in sheep's clothing. Have you ever heard of a wolf trying to dress up like a sheep? No, I, you know, I've never seen that before. But what Jesus was telling, uh, telling his followers is we need to be careful because sometimes people may present themselves to be something they're not. And sometimes people will act like they're telling us the truth when they're really not telling us the truth. And where do we always find the truth? In the Bible. That's right, because God always tells us the truth. And so if we're going to be wise sheep, we need to always learn how to listen and to know the Word of God. And the place that we find God's Word is where? In the, Bible. In the Bible. Let's thank God this morning for allowing us to be His sheep and for providing us all that we need to know in His Bible, okay? Let's pray together, boys and girls. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the boys and girls that are here today. We thank you for the workers that will be working with them during Children's Church this morning. And we just pray that they will continue to grow in their faith and their trust and their knowledge of you. But we also, Father, pray for ourselves, all the moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas that are here today, that we too will continue to grow in your truth and to be your sheep and to listen to your voice and to always follow you. For we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, boys and girls. I'm going to ask that you join me in song once again. Our hymn, it's number 408 in your hymnal. How firm a foundation. Let's stand once again as we sing the verses.
How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to
Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, choir. Some wonderful music this morning as we have been singing together about the firm foundation that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then, of course, being anchored to the rock of ages, having our faith uh, resting in the good work and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to look this morning been singing so much about belief and faith, and uh, this morning we're going to look at 1 John, the little epistle of 1 John, the back of the New Testament, chapter 4, the first six verses, and uh, we're going to be talking about the blessing of unbelief, the blessing of unbelief. Now, maybe you're sitting there saying, well, hold it, Pastor. <laughs> We've been singing about belief. We've been singing about faith. You know, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how can you this morning talk about the blessing of unbelief? Well, it is a blessing not to believe something when what it is that you are hearing is not true. <laughs> it is a blessing not to believe a lie. It is a blessing not to believe those who tell lies. And that's really what we're going to be looking at this morning is John is going to be warning us about false teachers, how we can recognize false teachers and how we should respond to false teachers. But most of all, most importantly, that we should not believe <laughs> a false teacher. Faith is important, but faith is only as good as the object or the person in which you put your faith. And so it is important that we believe the truth. And it is important that we do not believe those who tell lies. Now look with me, if you will, this morning, beginning in verse 1. John, writing to the church, says, Beloved, we know he's talking to the church. He's speaking to the brothers and sisters in Christ. Beloved, listen. Do not believe every spirit, but rather test the spirits to see whether they are what? From God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world, and by this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is the Christ that has come from the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Remember a few weeks ago, we saw how John had coined this term. He is the only one in the New Testament that uses it, the word Antichrist. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children. You are from God, and you have overcome them. And this is one of my favorite verses. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, talking about the false teachers. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. Now, we are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. And by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. May God bless the public reading of His Word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together as we get started this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, how our hearts have been blessed as we have been able to sing together about the wonderful foundation we have in Christ, our solid rock. And Father, indeed, today we pray that our faith would rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we know that the Bible warns us that we must always be careful, that there are sometimes wolves in sheep's clothing. Those who would try to deceive us, to prevent us from following the truth. And so, Lord Jesus, we pray today, as we look at this wonderful passage from the epistle of John, Lord, we pray that our ears would be open, that our hearts would be open, 
that we would hear the truth and we would receive the truth from the Word of God. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we want to consider the importance of not believing a lie. You know, it's interesting how John in this wonderful epistle, he, uh, he last week we looked at how he was telling us uh, how we should love one another. And uh, we saw in the latter part of uh, chapter 3 that when it comes to love, that we are to love as, as Christ loved us. And if we were to spring forward this morning, and we were to look in the latter part of chapter 4, we would see that John tells us why we should love one another. He says we should love because God is love. But right between those two wonderful passages about love, we find this warning, this instruction about false teachers. And I believe the reason for that is because, you see, John wants us to understand as God's people, we should have a loving heart. We should have a tender heart. But my friend, we shouldn't have a soft head. (laughs) We need to have a discerning spirit. We need to have a cautious spirit. And we need to be careful because, as John tells us, not everyone who professes to follow Jesus is following Jesus. Not everyone who professes to tell the truth is telling the truth. So this morning, let's look at this passage of Scripture and let's see, first of all, how to recognize false teachers. How to recognize false teachers. I was reading an article this past week. It was an article on a a musician. And uh, this is a very popular Christian musician. As a matter of fact, someone who is a Grammy-winning Christian musician. And uh, he was being interviewed, and they began to ask him about his faith. And he identified himself as a a progressive Christian who was, as he said, an ex-evangelical. And uh, the person asked, well, are you a follower of Christ? And he said, well, I'm a follower of the cosmic Christ. Now, I read the rest of the article, and it really didn't explain who or what the cosmic Christ is. But my friend, listen, if he's not following the Jesus you find in the Bible, he's following Antichrist. (laughs) He is following a false Christ. And I'm a little concerned because that tells me probably the music he's singing is not always telling the truth. You see, when it, when it comes to a false teacher, false teachers aren't always preachers. Now, some of them are, but we need to be careful of anyone and, and everyone so that we are not led astray by false teaching. We see in the Bible that John warns us many times of false teachers. Back in chapter 2 and verse 18, John said, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, <laughs> And now there are many antichrists, that is, false teachers, those who are opposed to Christ, those who teach that which is contrary to the teaching of the Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 4, He said that we should be careful because in the last days there will be many false teachers saying, I am the Christ. And they will lead many people astray. Peter also warned us that just as there were false prophets in the Old Testament, that there are false prophets today. Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, But false prophets also arose among the people then, just as there are false teachers among us today, who secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master, that is Jesus, who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Jude also warned us, the little book of Jude in the back of the New Testament. I love the book of Jude. Jude identifies himself as the half-brother of James. Now, James was the half-brother of Jesus. 
That is to say that James, his, his father, was, uh, was Joseph. We know that Jesus was conceived how? By the Holy Spirit. And his mother was Mary, just like Mary was the mother of Jesus. So Jude was the little brother of Jesus. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine having Jesus as your big brother? <laughs> well, old Jude, he's writing to the church, and in the third verse he says, Beloved, though I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation. In other words, I wanted to write to you about the blessings of being saved. He says, I found it necessary to write instead, appealing you to contend for the faith. There was once and, uh, once and for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who have perverted the grace of our God into sensuality and who have denied our only master and the Lord Jesus Christ, excuse me, and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Jude says, listen, these folks have crept in. <laughs> they don't come in announcing, I'm a false teacher. They don't begin their uh, television ministry program with a warning, false teaching ahead. So we have to be careful. We need to look for the marks and the signs that will warn us of a false teacher. Now, when I was a boy, I was raised down in South Carolina. And, uh, and I was a Boy Scout uh, for a few years. Matter of fact, I, I was an Eagle Scout. And uh, when I went to Boy Scout camp, uh, they would teach us about the different snakes and reptiles and things that we might encounter at the camp. And uh, one of the things they did is they warned us about the difference between a coral snake and a king snake. Now, if you're from the south, I don't think we have coral snakes here in Maryland, but uh, a coral snake and a king snake, they both have red, yellow, and black, black stripes. And the way you tell the difference, apparently, is that, uh, well, if you a coral snake uh, has yellow and red bands at touch. And a king snake will have uh, black bands and red bands at touch. And they had a little poem that said, uh, Red and black, friendly Jack. Red and yellow, a deadly fellow. Now, I had my own little poem, See a Snake Run Away. <laughs> But it was to help us identify the difference between a, a venomous snake and a harmless snake. Well, we need to recognize the difference between someone who is teaching the truth and someone who is telling a lie. How do we do that? Well, first of all, by the message. By the message. Look with me down in verse 2 of 1 John chapter 4. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus, uh, rather every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. In other words, John says, we need to listen. And we need to listen carefully. To what is being said, especially when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you see, false teachers are very clever. Uh, they're not just going to come out and, and tell a bold-faced lie. But what they'll do is they'll try to mix a little truth in with their error. You remember when Jesus was tempted, how the devil uh, uh, tempted Jesus. And one time, the devil even quoted Scripture in order to tempt Jesus. He would mix a little truth in with a lie. You may remember in the Garden of Eden how the devil deceived Eve and how he questioned her. And if you read what he said, you'll see that he takes a little bit of truth, what God has said, 
and he will mix it with a little bit of a lie. Well, my friend, you need to realize half a truth is no truth. <laughs> half a lie is a whole lie. And the Bible says that, listen, when it comes to the false teacher, we need to be careful. We need to listen to what they say, especially about the Lord Jesus Christ. What do they say about His deity? Do they say that He is God in human flesh? The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have beheld His glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. What do they say about His deity? What do they say about His humanity? That Jesus Christ in the flesh lived a perfect life, never sinned, never sinned. What do they say about His death? That He bore the sins of the world in His body on the tree, that we might become the righteousness of God. What do they say about His resurrection? That He literally, physically, on the third day, was raised from the grave. What do they say about His ascension? That He has ascended into heaven. What do they say about His second coming? That He is literally coming again. What do they say about the Lord Jesus? What do they say about the need of faith in Christ? That there is no other way to heaven except through the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard one very famous preacher. He's down from Texas. Likes to write books. You know, he has a very suave little uh, way of presenting himself and and he was asked about, well, when it comes to going to heaven, is Jesus the only way? And he said, well, well, Jesus is the best way to heaven. My friend, Jesus isn't the best way. He's the only way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Anyone regardless of what their initials may be, regardless of what denomination or religious identification they may have, anyone who says there's another way to heaven in addition to the Lord Jesus Christ is a false teacher. He's preaching a false gospel. Over in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 4, Peter was standing before the Sanhedrin, and John, the one that wrote this epistle, was there with him. They had, been, uh, they had been incarcerated for preaching Jesus. And in verse 11, the Bible says that Peter spoke up to them and said, This Jesus is a stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has now become the chief cornerstone. And then in verse 12, he says, And there is salvation in no one else. For listen, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. Now, the Bible doesn't say it, but John was standing right there. I imagine he said, amen, say it again. <laughs> Listen, the exclusivity of Christ. Listen to the message. No matter who is preaching, if someone says there's another way to heaven other than Jesus, they're a false teacher. Listen to what they say about Jesus. First, we listen to their message. Secondly, look at their methods. Look in verse 5. John says, They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. In other words, these false teachers, they, they follow the world's methods. They, they speak the world's language. They act more like they belong to the world than they belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, there are some worship services today that look more like a rock concert than a worship service. That's the world's methodology. That's the way the world operates. We hear folks 
all the time, criticizing the church and say, well, you know, they need to change their methods. There are some churches, they, they don't have preaching. They have a dialogue. And, uh, you know, they get up, two or three of them, it looks like the Oprah Winfrey show. And they kind of have a discussion about, well, this is what I think. What do you think? My friend, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. What is important is what has God said. And when it comes to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have come to look into the Word of God, to hear the truth of God, so that we might do the will of God. And we need to realize today, there are many today that are following the methods of the world rather than doing what God has told us to do. We are to preach the Word of God. We are to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to pray for one another. We are to witness to the lost. There is no substitute for the methods that God has given to us. My friend, we need to realize and understand that this world still desperately needs to know the Lord Jesus Christ. What about their methods? What about their message? Thirdly, what about, what about their motives? What is it that is motivating them in their ministry? Notice again in, in verse 5, John says they are from the world. In other words, they, they have a, a worldly motive. What are the things that, that motivate this world? Well, materialism, <laughs> uh, wealth, popularity, recognition, celebrity. I mean, these are the things that, that the world hungers for and longs for. Peter warned us when it comes to false teachers in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. He says, and their greed, and by their greed, they exploit you with false words. In other words, their motivation is not godliness. Their motivation is not holiness, but rather their motivation is financial gain. 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul is talking about false teachers. He says they are depraved in their minds. In verse 5, they've rejected the truth. And they imagine that godliness is a means of financial gain. We see it all the time on some of these televangelists. And, you know, they're always saying, you know, give me a dollar and God will give you ten dollars. I kind of want to write them a letter and say, well, you give me a dollar and let God give you ten dollars, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's not what the Bible is saying, especially when it comes to giving. Listen, we don't give to God in order that we can get from God. We give to God because God's already given us so much. We give to God as an act of worship. And gratitude because God has blessed us with so much. I mean, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, He what? He gave. <laughs> you cannot outgive God. When we bring our offerings and our tithes to the church, we're not bringing our gifts so that we can get something from God. We bring our gifts because we have already been so blessed by God. That's why the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. My friend, God doesn't need what we have because God already owns it. <laughs> I mean, He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He owns it all. What is the motive of many of these false teachers? Their motive is financial gain. Their motive is their, their own recognition and popularity. Their motive is their own comfort, their own pleasure. We need to look with discernment when it comes to anyone we have suspicions about being a false teacher. What about their morals? We've seen their message, we've seen their methods, we've considered their motives. 
What about their morals? Jude said again, they are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into sensuality. I mean, what about some of these folks we've heard about that have been involved in ministry that, you know, we begin to find out about questionable morality? Going to massage parlors, but they're not getting a massage. <laughs> what about these individuals? Listen, their, their morals are not reflected by their message. Matter of fact, they're doing the very opposite. They are living for themselves rather than living for the Lord Jesus Christ. John says again, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Listen to their message. Consider their methods. Consider their motives. Examine their morals before you believe what they say. Well, how do we respond? How do we respond to false teachers? I mean, do, do we just, uh, do we run and hide? You're watching television and there's a false teacher, turn the channel. <laughs> if you're uh, listening to one on the radio, listen to someone else. There are a lot of good teachers out there. A lot of great ministry. I know I have many, many in this, uh, in this nation that, uh, that just bless my heart. When we were singing How Firm a Foundation, the first thing I thought about was J. Vernon McGee through the Bible. <laughs> Old J. Vernon's going to be with the Lord. But I, I remember he used to say at the beginning of his little broadcast, we're recording these messages. One day I'll be up in heaven dancing on the streets of gold and you'll still be listening to me preach on the radio. Well, that's true. That's true. There are a lot of good teachers, a lot of good preachers, a lot of good ministries. So we don't want to just turn them all off. How do we respond? Well, we need to be cautious. Again, we see that John tells us not to believe every spirit, but what? Test the spirits. How do we test them? We test them with, listen, the truth of the Word of God. As we listen to their message, are they teaching the truth? Are they preaching the truth? Or are they communicating what God has said? Or are they just communicating personal opinion? Psalm 19, verse 7 David said, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. My friend, how much time are you spending in the Word of God? If you're not reading your Bible on a daily basis, I want you to know you're setting yourself up for a false teacher. <laughs> if you're going to recognize error, you better know the truth. How do we respond to false teachers? Well, we can be confident. Not just cautious, but confident. Again, look in verse 4. Little children, you are from God, and you have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. My friend, listen, if you're a child of God, if you know God is your Father, Jesus is your Savior, and heaven is your home, the Bible says the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. The Bible says that you are the temple of God. And I want you to realize sometimes the Holy Spirit will sound the alarm. You'll hear something and you say, you know, that just doesn't sound right. And that's the Holy Spirit saying, that's right. He's telling, oh, don't you believe that? 
You need to look in the Word of God. Don't pay attention. Don't you send him any money. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. Setting off the alarm. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You may be here this morning and say, well, preacher, how, how can I be confident? I mean, I've never been to Bible college. I've never gone to seminary. My friend, you've got the greatest teacher in all the universe living in your heart. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the same teacher I have. And I want you to realize and understand it is the Holy Spirit that will teach you the truth as you spend time in the Word of God. You just open your Bible and say, Holy Spirit of God, my heart is receptive. My ears are open. Now I pray here and now you will teach me the truth according to the Word of God. My friend, the Holy Spirit will answer that. He'll say, Amen, let's get busy. <laughs> You can respond, not just with caution, but with great confidence, but also, finally, with consistency. There's a need to be consistent. Look in verse 6. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. And whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, what is John saying, well, John is talking about the apostles. And he says, listen, the apostles, we are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. You need to realize and understand that the place where you hear the teaching of the apostles, the place where you hear the proclamation of the word of God, where is that? It's the church. It's the household of God. Listen, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but now you are fellow citizens with the saints as a believer, as a Christian, as a child of God. You're a saint. And you are a member of the household of God, built upon the foundation of of the apostles and the prophets. The prophets are in the Old Testament. The apostles are in the New Testament. In other words, it is the church that is established upon the foundation of the truth of the Word of God. Where are you going to hear the truth today? Where are you going to learn the truth today? Where are you going to grow in the knowledge of the Word of God? My friend, it is the local church. I want you to realize and understand if you're not actively involved in a Bible-believing, gospel-preaching, Jesus-loving church, you're a sitting duck for a, false, uh, for a false teacher. How do we avoid the false teachers? Well, we need to recognize them. And how do we respond to them? We respond with caution, but we respond with confidence, and we respond with consistency in the household of God, which is the church. God has provided us the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and the people of God in order to help us to defend ourselves against the false teachers and the Antichrist of this world. Well, how do I become a part of the church? I want you to know even though we're going to have an invitation, it's not about just coming forward and taking the preacher's hand. It's not about just saying a prayer, though I'm going to encourage someone to pray to receive Christ in a few moments. But my friend, what it's about is about surrendering your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says over in John's Gospel, John chapter 1, Verse 11, he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. Talking about Jesus. But to all those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of, the blood, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but they were born of God. Have you been born of God? 
Have you been born again? Do you know God is your Father? Jesus is your Savior? Heaven is your home? Are you a part of the family of God? I want you to know this morning you can be. By surrendering your heart and giving your life to the Lord Jesus. Let's pray together. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let me encourage you this morning, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, why not pray with me this morning and simply say, Lord Jesus, I confess today that I'm a sinner. But Lord Jesus, I believe today that you died for my sin on the cross. And I pray now that you'd forgive me of my sin and come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Give me the courage, I pray, to tell others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we have the Lord's Supper, we're going to have an invitation and give those this morning an opportunity. If you've made a decision for Christ, if you need to make a decision for Christ, God is leading you to respond this morning. We want you to come forward. Maybe this morning you need to come in order to make a public profession of faith. Maybe this morning God is leading you to come because you've never been baptized by immersion. Maybe you need to come this morning because God is leading you to be a part of the household of God here at Hughesville Baptist Church. If you need to come, you come. Kevin's going to come and he's going to lead us in our invitation hymn. You come as we sing together. Kevin. Our invitation hymn this morning is number 636 in your hymnal, I Must Tell Jesus. Let's stand as we close. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles, he is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make up my troubles quickly and end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Amen. Thank you. If you will be seated, please. We come to that time in our service as we prepare our hearts for the reception of the Lord's Supper. Things are a little different as we are still in the aftermath of the uh, pandemic. So I hope that as you were coming in this morning, you picked up a little cup in the foyer. Now, if you did not, I'll ask our ushers if they would please to kind of have a few of these available. And if you need one, just lift your hand and we'll try to get one to you. But hopefully everyone here this morning that would like to participate uh, has one of these little cups with the wafer on top. Before we begin, I'd like to read from the scriptures regarding the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Down in verse 23, Paul was writing to the church because they had some confusion and some questions about the Lord's Supper and how it was to be observed within the church. And so Paul said, I have received from the Lord that which I also now pass on to you. That the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You notice we see twice that the Lord Jesus said we do this in remembrance of him. There is nothing about this bread, nothing about this juice that will save you. You can eat all the bread we have and it won't get you into heaven. My friend, what this does is it reminds us that the way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. That it was his body represented by the bread that was torn when it was nailed to the cross. It was his blood that's represented by the juice that was spilt at the cross to atone for our sin and provide for us the means of our salvation. So as we come and we take of this bread and we take of this juice, we do so with a grateful heart, with a humble heart, understanding and recognizing that it is by grace that we have been saved through faith in the good work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. And let's, with every head bowed, let's give him thanks for his goodness and grace to us as we take the Lord's Supper together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today. The Lord God, you loved us so much, you gave your one and only Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Before the foundations of this world, Lord, you knew the direction that humanity would take. And yet, out of your loving grace, you chose, Father, to send your Son even before creation to provide the means of our salvation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you left heaven's glory, born in a dirty manger, living a perfect life. Though you were rejected, you responded with grace and love, that you suffered a cruel death, pierced for our iniquities, that you shed your blood for the remission of our sins, that you died for us, that you were buried, and that you have conquered death through your glorious resurrection. Now, as we take this bread and this juice, may we do so with a humble heart, but also with a happy heart, celebrating all the blessings that you have provided for us. Through your grace, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you'll take your little cup this morning and just be kind of carefully, you see there's a little little foil on top, and you pull that back carefully, and that'll expose the little wafer. If you'll take that little wafer out, and as you do so, remember that Jesus said, this is my body, this represents my body, which was pierced for your sin. Take, eat it in remembrance of me. Now, if you'll reach down again and kind of grab the cup by the corner, you should be able to peel back the little foil that's covering the juice. And again, we remember the words of Jesus. After the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant, which is my blood, Shed for the remission of your sin. Take and drink all of it in remembrance of me.
If you would, please, let's stand together. I want to thank you so much for coming and being a part of our worship service this morning. Hope you'll make every effort to be with us again next Sunday. Hope those who are joining us through our live stream will also unite with us again next Sunday as we come together to worship and give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May his grace and peace be upon you. And may he guide you in the days ahead until he brings you safely once again to this place where you can worship and praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for allowing us to be able to come to this place. We thank you, Father, for bringing us through this difficult pandemic. And Father, we thank you for watching over us and keeping us. The Father, more than blessing us today with the physical health to be here, we thank you for the privilege of the gift of your Holy Spirit of being made right with you through your Son, Jesus Christ, and having the wonderful blessing of being a part of the family of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you went to the cross to save our souls. We thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to live within us. And now we pray as we leave this place this morning, we will do so with grateful hearts, looking for the opportunities you bring our way each and every day to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Hello, this is Dr. Derek Yelton at Hughesville Baptist Church. I want to thank you so much for being with us these past Sunday mornings for our live stream service. As we enter into the spring months, we're seeing more and more people begin to attend our morning worship services. And of course, as we approach the summertime, we're hoping to start some of our small group Bible studies. If you can come and be with us on Sunday morning, we certainly look forward to having you join us for worship. Over the past few weeks, we've seen some new faces and we've seen some old faces that we haven't seen in quite a while. And we look forward to the day when we'll see your face here at Hughesville Baptist Church. Until then, thank you for being with us. Continue to worship with us online and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you and have a great day.